Welcome to the Wealthy Speaker Podcast. This is the podcast dedicated to people who want to speak more as a way to build their income and grow their business. Well, welcome everyone to the Wealthy Speaker Podcast. I'm your host, Jane Atkinson, and today we are talking about picking a lane. Oof, this is such an important topic, and I recently Uh, It's very top of mind for me because I'm just finishing up an article for Speaker Magazine that's going to be out in September. So keep an eye on your September issue of Speaker. Um, We're discussing picking a lane. And I could not think of anyone who has done it more beautifully than Elaine Fraze. Welcome, Elaine. Thanks, Jane. Glad to be here. Oh, I'm so excited to have you on the show. Just as a little side note, your last name is spelled F-R-O-E-S-E, but it's pronounced Fraze. And I wanted people to know that because they may look you up and look under the wrong spelling. We'll put lots of stuff in the show notes regardless. Um, Elaine, you have been demonstrating the pick a lane principle to me since I knew, you know, probably first met you 20 years ago. So talk about your career in this business. How did you even stumble into this business? Well, I started speaking when I was nine years old, Jane, when I was in the Dougal 4-H Home Ed Club, and I was doing uh, show-and-tell demonstrations with tote bags. So I've been speaking for a very, <laughs> for over 50 years, actually. Wow. And, then, and then when I was 22, I moved here to Southwest Manitoba to work with Manitoba Agriculture as an extension home economist. So what Americans would know as a county agent. And I have been working with farm families for over 40 years. And wow. my, I'm, and then I did the right thing, of course. I married a farmer in, uh-huh. 19, <laughs> in 1981. So Wes and I, are he's putting in our 42nd crop, I think. And um, it's beautiful sunny day here today on the farm and the canola is going in. So eat your canola oil. That's all I <laughs> Go canola oil. Yes. All right. Mama needs a new cottage or something. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Well, uh, I think that your career is going to be quite fascinating to people. And sometimes when we talk about picking a lane, we talk about it from, well, the, the actual essence of the phrase picks a, pick a lane is really intended for the topic. Now, in your case, your topic is agriculture or something like that, or farm families, but you can speak on so many things within that market. Do you speak on everything pertaining to agriculture, or have you even narrowed that lane? Well, in the beginning, I joined CAPS in 2003, and that was a pretty watershed year for me for many different reasons. It was also the year that I felt... Uh, called to be a coach. So I took my executive coaching training with the Hudson Institute in Santa Barbara, which was a fantastic experience. Okay. Gave me a real roadmap for helping out farm families. And uh, I understood then too how unique I was because I had 37 other people that were just glad to know me as a rural person and a farmer because they, of course, were all urban. And then the other thing I did in 2003 was take a conflict resolution and mediation skills training of about 22 days. And so I did a lot of learning that really fit together because what I was seeing from my work back in the mid nineties um, was I was being called to kitchen tables with my flip chart to do family communication facilitation. So mm. I know agriculture, the culture of agriculture cold because I'm a farm kid, grew up on a farm, live right. on a farm, work with farmers. And so all these 40 years, Jane, I've been given lots of different opportunities, but it's, it's sort of settled down into farm transition and communication and conflict resolution. Right. Having those difficult conversations has become your sweet spot. And when you go out and speak, talk about some of the audiences that you speak to. Okay, so let's back up a second because I bet you in 2003 when you first got into this, people said, oh, there's no money in agriculture, Elaine. You should go somewhere else. (laughs) What did you say to that? I I just smiled and listened um, because that person was from Toronto. Oh, (laughs) No, no offense to all my CAPS friends in Toronto. I love you dearly. Uh, but 2003 was also when I met Tom Stoyan at my first CAPS convention. He's Canada's sales coach. And bless Tom because he taught me how to make an audit. And I've used the key challenge audit um, ever since I met Tom. I also met Michael Hughes, who said, so Elaine, what's your consulting rate going to be? And we um, 
made at the same price as a bag of canola. And the bag of canola now, Jane, funnily enough, is $750 an hour. So I should, <laughs> Go canola. I, I should be up in my rate. But I'm sure everybody said back in the early days, uh, yeah, not a lot of money in farmers. So let's talk about who pays your full fee today. What kind of audiences? Uh, dairy farmers and supply marketing. So I'm speaking to egg farmers next month in Winnipeg. I'm speaking to dairy farmers of America in San Diego this month. Um, so commodity group farming and associations. I also do a lot of work with counties in Alberta. I can now, thanks to WestJet, fly Brandon in Alberta and be in Alberta in two hours. So um, and there's a culture across Canada too that's different in agriculture where people will call me Elaine and say, how soon can you come? Where do I send the check? Right. And another, another province might say, well, how much do you cost? So I tend to gravitate, of course, to the people who are just more than willing to write the check quickly and, and see the value in my work. Elaine, did that take some time? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I'm, 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 I'm asking you this question, but I know it took time because I was your coach for a year. So, yeah. uh, you know, talk about standing tall in your fees and really allowing the people who don't place the right amount of value on your information. It's not that they don't value you as a person. It's that they're not valuing the information that you're sharing to the degree that you want in fee. Right. So I just put out a, um, a blog post this weekend for Mother's Day and I got a comment from a mediation friend of mine and he said, Elaine, you are doing life changing work. And so that's a great affirmation to have. But what's at risk in agriculture, Jane, are multi-million dollar farm businesses. But more than that, what's at risk are the value of the relationships in the farm family. So right. my sweet, my my strength and what you would call my superpower is the way I'm wired as a person and a speaker for communication and empathy and lifelong learning and and woo and woo is the ability to win others over quickly. So standing tall in my fees means that you know, I'm very clear about how much money farmers are spending on crop production inputs and what what uh, companies are, are paying on advertising towards agriculture. Right. Because I was given a huge gift in 1995. Um, an acquaintance of mine, unfortunately, was dying of cancer. And she was a columnist of 17 years in a paper called Grain News, which at that time might have had a subscription rate of over 50,000 farmers. Now it's about 19,000. But I have been writing in that paper for 25 years next year. Wow. And I, I thought when I took over from her, she said, Elaine, I've been watching you. I like your writing. I want you to take my place. So that has given me a very traditional platform, Jane, of getting into farmers' homes. And now I'm coaching the next generation because 24 years has gone by. Mm -hmm. So 19, 19 times a year I'm writing, and that writing has turned into four books uh, because I'm always meeting deadlines and the ebooks became actual hard copy books. So, mm -hmm. so the speaking and the writing and the coaching is what ne uh, Neil Cobain calls confluence. It all kind of feeds into each other. And that's why my lane is the culture of agriculture and it all keeps just feeding into each other. And then of course I am now 62 years old. So of course I am the mother of a successor. So I'm like a, a reality show for my audience because I'm going through exactly the same thing they are. Right. So I, and you're I taking can, them there through your column. Right. Exactly. So they oh. know my, they liked, they know my life pretty well. And I get, um, I have really great relationships from people who read my work and it's very gratifying that, that if I was to die tomorrow, I at least would have four books and a lot of blogs to, and YouTube videos to keep encouraging people. That's great. And you really are the ultimate encourager, Elaine. Um, talk about being, uh, we call it OPP, on other people's podcasts. Yeah. What, uh, you just got some exciting news on that front. Right. So I, um, I'm very active in ag Twitter. I use Hugh Culver's company, Your Blog Works, to help uh, populate my social media. But I also engage and jump in quite a bit because that's where my tribe likes to live and dialogue. And there's this guy down in Illinois named Rob Sharkey who calls himself the Shark Farmer. And he's got quite a few thousand followers. And he does a podcast called What the Farm. <laughs> he sounds a little, he sounds a little edgy. 
He is edgy. You yeah. should listen to him. That's why he has okay. so many followers. But anyway, yeah. Leslie Ray Kelly, who's on Twitter, is high heel, high heels and canola fields. There's the canola theme again. Uh, Leslie is very involved with mental health and do more agriculture, which I'm a sponsor in terms of mental health and farming. Anyway, Leslie and um, Rob interviewed me last week for What the Farm. And then this morning I was on his Shark Farmer podcast. So I'm expecting lots of... Um, interesting that's conversations yeah wonderful wonderful mm. if we hear some strange noises in the background that's just farm life there's yeah. all kinds of, you're in the communication hub there and your office right. and uh, there may be that, things that, going on you know that's right that would be my, my landline uh, call forwarding to my husband's cell phone for seed orders and someone coming to pick up something seed orders okay so let's talk about because i just have a feeling that a lot of people don't even understand how much money there is in agriculture people think about farmers and they think poor poor farmers or oh the poor farmers are having a rough go this year because of the weather which is pretty much every year there's always something happening with the weather bad or good right so um let's just talk about what this operation is it's a multi-million dollar operation and that is not that uncommon is it no and it it's there's a whole gradient of farmers and and what's happened now jane with uh, land prices and whatnot is that a lot of farm legacy work that I do, it's intergenerational because it is transitioned down to the family. So for instance, um, my combine that combines the wheat that makes your bread now costs over $500,000. We just yeah. bought a new sprayer and we got a good deal on it for $400,000. So the yeah. input, the cost of machinery is high. The cost of inputs is high and you'll hear poor farmers where p farmers are poor is they're frustrated in their tents because there's so much uncertainty in their future. So they do everything as business people to manage their risk. And for me, I see conflict resolution as a business risk management strategy. I also spent 10 years working as a farm debt mediator back in the eighties when interest mm -hmm. rates were 22%. Yeah. And uh, some of you that was probably a very yet. sad, sad time in farming, I suspect. Yeah. But it's coming again in terms of tight margins and low profits. So yeah. uh, when people say there's no money in agriculture, the money has to be very managed very carefully. And yeah. uh, people with high debt, high debt load are in a tough spot. Yeah, because the money is tied up in land and equipment and things like that. And any kind of government change could send some sort of shockwave through uh, the farming community. Um, let's, let's talk about where though. Okay. So just that, that was just to let people kind of have a little glimpse of the agricultural industry, but let's talk about where you might go to find business in this market. So we've already had associations. We've already had mostly different groups of people who gather dairy farmers, etc. But what about sponsorships? You have gone uh, directly to some organizations to get sponsorships. Can you talk about that a little bit? Right. So there's a, uh, one of my key sponsorships in the last couple of years um, to get into different audiences has been Farm Credit Canada. We call it FCC. Mm -hmm. So all they do is agriculture. And so through their learning events coordinator, I have um, worked four or five seminars for years with them. I've also had sponsorship uh, through different accounting firms. So I've been with Myers Norris Penny for over 30 years and also done a lot of work with BDO Dunwoody. And these are accounting firms that are very key in on agriculture and they know my work and the value of my work. And so um, I'll align sponsorships with them. And in Saskatoon in September, there's this big farm show called Ag in Motion where they walk they walk in fields and they see all kinds of big plot projects. And um, I'll be speaking there on July 17th at two o'clock and that will be sponsored by the Royal Bank of Canada. So it's important. And I've also done a lot of good work with Charmaine Hammond because that's her specialty in, in helping. Sponsorships, yes. Sponsorships, exactly. Because people will say, well, Elaine, we'd love you to come but we don't have enough money. And I say, well, how much money are you spending on beer or coffee? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> it's true. Sometimes we've talked about uh, the fact that they were going to spend more on their coffee break than they would on the speaker and to really understand your place as a 
cog in the giant wheel that is the mis- the meetings industry. Now, I want, you know, okay, so you've had, how many years have you been speaking full time? Um, well, I was, I've been speaking full time since I was 22 in my job as an extension home economist, but I would really would say that as um, a business, as a business, when I joined CAPS in 2003, I really got serious about okay. framing myself as a business speaker. So, so it's so been 16, over, over a decade, 16 years. Yeah. Okay. So over the course of the 16 years, what would you say have been some of the biggest game changers or flashpoints for you? What made a difference and then you went to this level and then something else and went to this level? I imagine one of the books was probably right. a flashpoint. And the, the nice part was, is I won two awards for my first book. So that mm. was a nice way to get started. And I see my books as a tool uh, for taking, giving value Uh, once the audience goes home and keeping the message going. The book has also become a very important tool of planting a seed. My business is actually called Seeds of Encouragement, which is what my first column was called way back. Pun intended. Yes, (laughs) absolutely. Very, all our pun friends. Uh, Ravi Tangri, that's a shout out to you. And David (laughs) Guthrow. Um, Anyway, so the books have been a very good thing. Um, I've also gone on Audible now, Jane, with one of my books because I, I pay attention to what my listeners and audience and say. They're in tractors all day long. And what are they doing? They're listening to things. And that's why podcasts are such a big thing in agriculture as well, because there's a lot of learning and connecting going on that. So the book was a good thing. And I use Friesens of Altona because I want to support rural Manitoba. Um, and they do my books, and that's been that's good. a Another, book printing agency, Friesens uh, in Manitoba. We'll get that in the link in the show notes. Yeah, and they they've um, they also did all the J.K. Rowling Harry Potter books, so they really know what they do. Mm, yeah. Impressive. That's nice. Mm-hmm. Uh, okay, so book was one flashpoint. What was think back to another thing that you did where you're like, oh, that really worked. Uh, well, getting on other people's podcasts, but I, I also. Uh, early on was invited to Ag Vision TV with Kevin Stewart in your hometown of London. Yes, yes. So I did I did that for three years and you would be amazed at people who say, oh, I saw you on television. Ah, that was years and years and years ago and they just still keep thinking like it was yesterday because it's a very intimate form of communication and you get right into people's homes and of course now we can do that on YouTube. So I'm also happy to report that my Finding Fairness and Farm Transition YouTube video, which I just created almost by accident last January in 2018, has almost a thousand views. It's not right. a million, but but a thousand for me is is encouraging. It's and that and that was again listening to an audience member and saying, Elaine, we just need you to drill down even deeper on this key issue because right. no one's talking about it. Um, and then another flashpoint has been this last six months where I've been nominated for uh, some awards. So I have an Excellence in Farm Management Award from Farm Management Canada. Beautiful. And, and 4-H Canada gave me their Most Distinguished Alumni Award as their first recipient, which is really uh, gr- gratifying because at the outset, I told you I've been speaking since nine years old. And so 4-H was and a really 4-H, good, that's where yeah. it all began. That's lovely. What a nice wraparound. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then our farm was just awarded Farm Family of the Year with the Winter Fair here in Brandon, along with six other families from the Bank of Montreal. So that's really fun, too. That's amazing. Now, um, there's a couple of things I want to talk about. You know, what do you think is one of the main advantages of doing what you do? And the reason why I'm asking this question is because you had a very life altering situation happen. Uh, was it two years ago now that your husband got into a pretty bad accident? Uh, October 2nd, 2018. 2018. So it seems like it was longer ago than that, but. No, um, no. Yeah, it was 20, 2017. Sorry, October 2017. 2nd. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's right. So, so talk about how you had to manage your life when you get the news and and talk about the accident? So um, I was on a plane with my sister. She was going back to Victoria to her home and I was going to Chilliwack to coach some families and uh, got the news in Calgary that I needed to call home ASAP. And that's never a good text for my son. So my, my husband uh, 
was checking soybean fields for harvest and when an uncontrolled intersection smashed into a very large, heavy industrial trailer and he was airlifted to Winnipeg and in trauma care for 10 days. So that meant that I had to change my business to be able to take care of him while his hospital bed was in our living room. And the reason I was able to do that, Jane, is um, first of all, I will always honor my speaking contract. So I, I did that, but I basically shut down my coaching practice for three to four months. And with your coaching help in terms of putting in more systems in place and also hiring good people around me, I had a virtual assistant who could take care of incoming things and people were very understanding because my audience are farmers Mm -hmm. and they, and they really reached out to me and say, Oh yeah, Elaine, we totally understand. Yeah. And my, and my speaking, you know, the, the interesting thing is that his accident happened right at the beginning of what as my harvest in terms of speaking, which of Mm -hmm. course is when farmers are off the fields in the winter right between november 1st as they're winding down and before they get geared up again in april so it was also interesting because my books um would be still selling i have an online course so it was still selling and it was just a good a good thing and and my income did drop significantly because i lost that quarter of coaching income Mm -hmm. but that's okay um i was still able to um to move on. And, and, you know, I didn't go to the CAPS convention because of course I was taking care of my husband. So it's, again, I have so many stories of things that happened to me that I use as life teaching moments Mm -hmm. for my audience. And I show a picture of my husband when both his shoulders look the same. And I say, this is a picture of commitment and attention to detail, but what if, what if this person is no longer in your life? And I think that's what makes my speaking powerful is because I have so many life lessons and stories that apply to the culture, which I understand like the back of my hand. It's, it's my tribe. And do you think that people, you know, remember communication lesson number three, or do you think that they remember that day on the field when yeah. you were chatting with your son or something like that? No, I, I, it's, it's definitely the power of the story. And I guess it's, I can say thank you to a little bit of my mother's Irish DNA that I inherited and my ability to tell very powerful stories. And I have people who, you know, might run into them in the airport or see them five years later and they say, Elaine, I can still remember this story. And then they'll start repeating it back to me. So Mm -hmm. that's, that's the power of, of story that, um, we want to get out in agriculture too. I, there's, there's some very um, scary things happening in agriculture with uh, activism happening on farms and down around in your area. There's some farmers that are being um, targeted. And those are the things in agriculture that we're trying to tell people that that's not acceptable behavior. And, and we're stewards of the land. We're business people. And right. There's a lot of emotional tension on farms when the markets drop and when the weather's terrible, but there's ways to navigate that. And and that's what we need people to come alongside with. Right, right. I have the advantage of understanding your business because our best friends are farmers and (laughs) they have the cottage right next to ours. Um, And by the way, one of the things that we had talked about, you said that um, I had inspired your own caught lakeside retreat purchase talk about that a little bit and what that has meant to you in terms of life balance right so we were very um fortunate we've invested in a lot of different companies over the year and and because we were growing uh only oats which is certified seed oats that went to a gluten free oats producing factory called uh, avena foods we came into some money unexpectedly at the right time to be able to purchase a lake house that's only 16 minutes from the farm so (laughs) you always say uh well you sign off uh see you soon wealthy speakers and that's something jane we don't take for granted is that to have a retreat place where i can go and write i actually like to go and live there during the summertime and i come back to my garden at the farm and um come to the farm when I need to, but it gives me a very good, good place to sort of deal with what I could call compassion fatigue as a speaker. Mm. Yes. Um, Because not only, I'm not only a keynote breakout speaker, I also do a lot of um, one-to-one family coaching, which is different than individual coaching because I'm dealing with an entire family. Family. So that, that wears you down after the season. And so it's good to have that time in July and August to do a reset and, um, come back how important do you think it is i mean you cannot serve from an empty well right 
Right. So, no. so that's something that you have learned uh, probably repeatedly over the years, wouldn't you say? Because your family work is so intense. Right. And the other thing is part of my story is I'm a postpartum depression survivor. So I've, I've made a covenant with myself to sort of always tell that story. And it never fails that two or three members of the audience will come and speak to me privately and say, I'm so glad you shared that. And I was just recently speaking to a group of 180 women. And I, I always, part of my intention before I speak is I pray to get centered. And I always ask for wisdom as to what stories will be the most powerful. And so sometimes I'm sure other speakers listening to this, you never know why one story comes to top of mind. But right. this woman came up to me. She said, you have no idea what that did for me. And then then people started sending me things. They, they were sending me CDs and they gave me a mug full of peppermints. And I was just like, this is a very, it was one of those places where you're standing on the stage and you look out and you see the white tablecloths and the flowers. This is at the Arden Park Hotel in Stratford, Ontario. And I thought, this is such an amazing day because there's 180 women here just ready to soak in something that will make their life better. Mm. And so that was, a, that was an amazing day. You know, that's really probably a really nice note to wrap up on in that we as speakers, as communicators, and for me, we kind of help in directly, um, what, what we do is important. It's important work that helps the world be better. And uh, Elaine, that's one of the biggest things that I know about you is that you have a heart as big as Missouri. I mean, it is massive. And so um, just thank you for the work that you do and the good work. I will thank you on behalf of all the agricultural fam farm families that you have helped. Thank you for the good work that you do. You really are a, a really shining example of uh, how to do things in that, in that world. And I'm glad we can walk alongside Jane. It's, you know, you've done great work for me too. I ha actually picked up, I was in Texas recently and I have a new sign on my shelf that says do good work. Ah. And, uh, yeah. And we want to be reminded as speakers that when we are starting to feel like our well is empty, that we need to find a way to fill it up. And I, I would just encourage your audience to, uh, continue to be lifelong learners you keep me company on this podcast when i'm flying to alberta and uh, when i'm driving the the best time you keep me company is in the dark of night from northern alberta in the verge of a snowstorm uh, i'm gonna be okay jane's talking to me so. <laughs> i'll talk you through this i'll be yeah, like your on star only yeah, in you, podcast form right okay. no, that's really good so well, thank you elaine so uh, let's share with people where they can get a hold of you and the and the good work that you're doing so uh, farmfamilycoach.com. It's easy to spell. So Beautiful. that domain will, will flip to elainephrase.com, which is my website. Also audible.com has my book, Building Your Farm Legacy. And youtube.com has Farm Family Coach, which is my channel. And would love to put more video on there as I can. But um, just Google Farm Family Coach and you'll find me. Beautiful. Thank you, Elaine Fraze, for your time today. We really appreciate it. Thank you, and go use uh, canola oil on that salad you enjoy. <laughs> <laughs> go canola shares. Woo well, thank you all for uh, listening. If you've enjoyed the Wealthy Speaker Podcast, I hope you're sharing it with your friends. I would really love this to be the year, Woo, the big breakout year for the Wealthy Speaker Podcast. We doubled just last month. I'm so excited, and I hope we will continue continue to uh, grow. And uh, with that, we will say, see you soon, Wealthy Speakers. Bye for now, everyone. Thanks for listening to the Wealthy Speakers show. Please visit speakerlauncher.com for your free Wealthy Speaker audit and visit speakerlauncher.com forward slash podcast for show notes and many more resources to help you catapult your speaking business. See you soon, Wealthy Speakers.